Hello, everybody. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, CEVEC and our activities in the cell and gene therapy space to you this afternoon, shortly after lunch. I hope I will be able to wake you up after a wonderful meal. So CEVEC is dedicated to developing advanced technologies for viral vector production. We have two different platforms for this. The platform that I will not talk about today is our CAPAT platform for RCA-free adenovirus vector production. Um, but I will talk in detail about L our Elevector platform, which is dedicated to the production of AAV vectors. And both platforms are highly suitable for um, man vector manufacturing at a large scale. So when we think of cell and gene therapy and ATMPs, we usually think about rare diseases. But if we really look at the numbers, I was surprised to see that's actually no longer the case. So when we look at the number of clinical trials and then have a look, and these um, numbers are actually taken from, from the annual ARM report, and actually have a look at the numbers of trials directed to um, rare diseases versus um, trials directed to prevalent diseases, what you see is that the prevalent diseases are really taking over. So even in phase three, there are more clinical trials for prevalent diseases than for rare diseases. While this is really good news for the field, it also means that the manufacturing challenges are increasing because obviously with uh, prevalent diseases, you're going to have much higher patient numbers. So you're going to need much bigger numbers of viral vectors, much bigger production batches. Just to give you an example, when you look at ultra-rare diseases, rare diseases um, <coughs> for ophthalmic indications, for example, um, you can get away with the classical production method. So for Luxterna, for example, you need about 10 to the 12th to 10 to the 13th viral uh, particles or viral genomes per year. This can be produced by the classical production methods as they were developed in the universities originally and have obviously been refined since. since. But when we then move on to really prevalent diseases, diseases including something like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, for example, then the annual need easily multiplies by a million. And of course, this can no longer be covered by, by the old production methods. A lot is happening. Of course, the production has moved away from adherently growing cells to cells in suspensions that can be grown in bioreactors, can be transfected in bioreactors. But um, this still will not be sufficient in many, in many instances. And um, so we think, and this is where our activities have been directed to, it really has to move to a fully stable cell lines. And this is what we have been able to generate with our Elevector technology, where we have inducible stable producer cell lines that carry all the information that's required to make an AAV, so including the capsid gene, the gene of interest. Um, so these cells then go into bioreactors for production, are induced, and will produce AAV. So no plasmid transfection step for any of the production steps, no helper virus. That's what really makes the technology different from anything else that is around. <clears throat> And of course, you need a specific producer cell for each individual uh, therapeutic, because the capsid will be specific. It can be one of the known common capsids. It can also be a capsid proprietary to your, your project, to your product. And of course, the therapeutic gene will also be individual for each, for each therapeutic product. So we're starting from our alpha cell line that already carries the helper genes and the rep genes inducibly. And we introduce in a cell line development project then the specific, the product specific capsid and GOI. And after that stable integration, we have the final inducible producer cell line. Um, we start with the polyclonal population. We go through single cell cloning then by using cell printer and also image-based verification of the clonality of the cell lines. 
We do initial screening in multi-well plates and from there um, take the top clones to an Ember 15 system that already gives us a good indication so we'll, which clones will be <coughs> uh, good producers and show the desired qualities in a starting bioreactor. And from the Ember 15, we do directly, we directly do the scale up to 10 liters. We don't do, we don't need any intermediate steps. And um, so this is, this is an example here of one clone where we ended up with 10 to the 14th VG per liter in a 10 liter scale. And of course, 10 liter is nice, but then we get the question, what about bigger scales? 200 is really critical. So we set out in, to a collaboration with Paul. Um, they used their Allegro starting bioreactor system, single use, and um, took our 10 liter process, scaled that up to 50 liters, and from there to 200 liters. And as you can see that, well, you can't see it here, but it went really smoothly. And we achieved the same titers in also reproducibly in, in two independent runs for each, of the, for each of the volumes. So scale up, very straightforward, very easy with this platform, not losing any yields. And the titles I'm showing you here is, is crude harvest. So no enrichment at that point in time. But of course, now having the advantage of being able to work with the stable saline, we can do more when it's comes to process, you can think about process int intensification. So the next step we actually did was um, to apply an ATF perfusion process to this, this cell line, and this is our proof of concept cell line, so I'm sh only showing you data of our own cell line, not of any of our client cell lines. But what we did here was actually apply <coughs> ATF perfusion, and again, in, in two and in the meantime, three independent runs, what we're seeing is that this gives another boost to the productivity. So we're seeing a 30-fold increase in titers, again, crude harvest here. So up three times 10 to the 15, 3 G per liter. And um, <clears throat> it's not only due to the higher cell numbers, we're all also seeing a, an about 10-fold increase in cell-specific productivity, so it really boosts the, the productivity of AV in our elevator producer cells. What we're also seeing is that the percentage of full particle increases. So when we analyze the, the AV particles um, in the crude harvest, we see that after about four days perfusion run, we end up with 30 to 40 percent full particles without any enrichment. So we gain a lot from process intensification here. And um, this, is, this is data that we have generated over the last, last two, one, one to two years. Uh, what I want to do now is basically switch gears a bit, take a step back from Elevector first, because obviously, and if you're working on, on AV production, that will not be news to you, product quality is getting of increasing importance. There are a lot of different quality attributes. One, of course, is the percentage of full particles. Another one that's really important is um, product-related impurities, including encapsidated host cell DNA. So when the AVs are being generated, you end up with the AVs you would like to see, just carrying the gene of interest, but you also have particles that will package and encapsulate host cell DNA. They can just have host cell DNA or they can have uh, the, the gene of interest plus host cell DNA. And since th that host cell DNA is encapsulated, there's no way of purifying it away. So it will be part of your product. So obviously, it's really important to re be able to reduce that host cell DNA. So we asked ourselves the question, is it possible to remove encapsulated host cell DNA by changing and modifying the production process. This is what we did, and since it's not only important for our Elevector platform, but also for all other conventional AV production methods, we started looking at um, transient transfection in HEK293 cells, which is at the moment still the most commonly applied process. And what we found is that when we 
just gener uh, use the standard pi transfection process as it's being used generally, we see a certain amount of encapsulated host cell DNA very much comparable to what's reported in literature. And then by modifying the process, and we tried quite a number of different modifications, we can greatly reduce that amount of encapsulated DNA down to the single digit percent as, as compared to the control. So we were very excited about that. And of course, then wanted to know, does it also work for other systems? So we next looked at our proprietary cell. It's an, it's an amniocyte derived cell in the CAP cells. We also applied transient transfection there. And of course, we also looked at the stable cell, at the stable elevator cell line. And we were very pleased to see that actually it works not only in 293 cells, but also on the amniocyte cell line, on the CAP cell line. And um, we did two different cargos here. We also looked at empty capsids. Also there, you can reduce host cell DNA. And even in the elevator cell line, where we could actually reduce encapsidated host cell DNA close to background level. So to, in summary, I hope I present, presented to you how we have established an inducible stable producer cell line for plasmid and hypervirus-free AV production, that um, we can do a robust scale-up in stir tank bioreactors, that we get very competitive yields with the system up to 3 times 10 to the 15 with G per liter with 30 to 40 percent full particles, and um, also was happy to share with you our really latest development, which is a modified process for the reduction of encapsulated host cell DNA, which works with our stable elevator system, but also with conventional uh, transient transfection based elevator uh, production methods. So, how can you work with us? So, we obviously don't do this just for fun. We're partnering with. Um, <laughs> a number of biotech and pharma companies, an ever-increasing number, and we're basically uh, doing the cell line development for their specific producer cells. We then hand those cells over ready for GMP banking to our partners or to their CMO of choice or to one of our partner CMOs. Um, then, of course, we out-license the, the technology so our partners can actually use the cells we make for them for commercial product uh, uh, manufacturing. And we have a number of partners, like most of them don't want to be named at that point in time, it will hopefully change, but I can name Roche and Spark and Biogen and, and UCB in Europe. And I thank you very much for your attention.